the first thing a user will see when they open your dashboard is, well, the dashboard. And first impressions are everything. So we want to be sure it's polished, professional, and pops without being over the top. As we create the visualizations that will be placed on the dashboard, we also need to ensure that they work together so they appear like one seamless design. Often the way to do this, whether it's for a digital dashboard, a printed document, or even doing something like creating an outfit or designing a room, is to decide on a theme that can be used to ensure that all of the elements coordinate and work together. In Microsoft Office, this is done by designating font and color sets that are stored as a reusable theme. In Excel, we can find these options from the Page Layout tab. They should be the very first group called Themes. From this group, we have the option to apply an entire theme all at once or to work with the individual components, which are made up of colors, fonts, and special effects, things like rounded corners and drop shadows for shapes. Let's start with an easy one, and that would be fonts. There are several font sets that are already defined. The default for the newer versions of Office is to use Calibri, but we'll see that we can go kind of backwards, if you will, to some of the older styles, including Office 2007-2010, and even back further if we need to, using some of those older fonts like Times New Roman. Since we want our design to look current, we should choose fonts that are current. And I hate to break it to you if you aren't already aware of it, but Times New Roman went out of style about two decades ago. Believe it or not, Arial went by the wayside about five or more years ago as well. So try using new fonts. That doesn't mean that they're trendy or difficult to read, but the newer fonts are kind of more rounded and spaced a bit differently. That's the best way to put it in general. More importantly, but less obvious, is that the newer fonts are significantly clearer, which means less eye fatigue for your users. Calibri is the default in Office 2010 and later, and it's a good choice, unless your branding requires otherwise. If you want or need to create your own font set, you can simply move to the bottom of the menu and choose Customize Fonts. This displays a window, and as I promised, this is pretty simple. You only have two to choose from. What is your heading font and what is your body font? Since we like Calibri and Calibri is already available, we're simply going to cancel and keep the fonts the way that they are. It gets a little more involved when we want to work with color sets. Many of us don't think about color that much. Often in Excel, it's black text on a white background with maybe a fill color now and then. Since we'll be creating drawing shapes, making charts, and using text for our dashboard, it's more important than ever to ensure that we have colors that are easy to read and work well together. As with the font set, we can choose from a predefined set of colors. Using the predefined sets may be a little more important just because there's so many colors. We can see a myriad of things to choose from. You'll notice that whenever we choose a different font set or color set, it automatically applies to anything that uses automatic fonts or automatic coloring. With just a couple of clicks, we can dramatically change the look of our worksheet. Let's choose red-orange. Notice how the hyperlinks, the color of the cloud, and the color of the accent colors at the bottom of the screen all automatically change. We did not have to go in and update them ourselves. If we change it back to, say, blue, again, all different colors. So this is a fast, easy way to update colors and make sure that they're the colors that you want. Like font sets, we can also customize color sets. This might be important to make sure it matches your branding or your audience. We'll expand the Colors option, go all the way down to the bottom, and click or tap Customize Colors. There are 12 different color designations that can be made. We're going to start by moving down to the bottom and creating a name, because Custom 1 is not good. Let's go ahead and call this Dashboard. Now we can focus on the colors themselves. As a general rule for dashboards, we want to use high contrast colors for our text and our background. Black and white, believe it or not, even in this day of full color, are good choices. So we're not going to mess too much with the text background for dark or for light, one or two. That means we already have four of the 12 colors figured out. Now, as we look through these colors, because we don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, we're maybe just going to swap around a couple of them. Maybe we would prefer that our hyperlink color, which is the one that's next to the last at the bottom, is more of the blue color that we see currently used by Accent 1. We'll just swap these two colors around by clicking on the drop-down, choosing the orange color for Accent 1, and likewise coming down to Hyperlink and using the dark blue color there. 
From these drop downs, we can also choose custom colors, including using RGB values if we happen to have them. And don't forget, on the right hand side, it gives us a preview, so we can kind of see what we're doing as we go and find out if things are going to be easy to read or more difficult. For example, we may notice that on a dark background, our hyperlink color is a little bit difficult to see. So we can return to the hyperlink color. Instead of choosing the full color of blue, maybe bring it down just a touch by using something that's just a little bit lighter. Once our colors are set, we can move to the bottom right, click or tap Save, and our color set is now going to be available for use not only in this document, but in any document that we have in all of the Office products. We'll be able to see that our colors are available in a lot of different places. If we expand the Colors drop-down one more time, we'll see that our custom color set is available at the top of the menu. If we go back to the Home tab, we'll be able to see that all of our options that rely on color are now utilizing our new color scheme, so we don't have to think about what color of blue that was that we used. If we want to save all of our settings under Page Layout, the colors, the fonts, and even special effects, then we can move over to the Themes option, expand it and go all the way to the bottom just like we've done before, and say Save Current Theme. This is actually just a file that's saved so it can be shared with other people, even via email, and they can install it into their own folder and have access to it. We named our Colors dashboard. Now we're actually going to save the entire theme as dashboard as well. I think creating a theme, especially for company colors, is something that should be done so that everybody can be using the same thing, and not every individual has to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what colors to use. It produces polished, professional documents and presentations that include consistency across all of the different applications. Now, formatting is always important, but in Excel, we tend to minimize the emphasis on design in traditional workbooks. For dashboards, design is an important component, so invest a little bit of time thinking about it and creating a custom theme if you need to. It's going to allow us to quickly and consistently apply color to any element in our workbooks. Don't forget, we only have to do it once. After it's done, we can reuse it and all of our other files in any Office application. So developing a theme, especially when branding and consistency are important, is always time well spent.